any rate, we have our final panel with considerations and feedback and ideas and takeaways from the Zero Conference. I'm going to hand it over to our fantastic, still standing, Tom Butcher. Take it away. I could give you some yeah. James Bond music, but I think you can yeah, just... No, please don't believe a word of her about fantastic or well, he anything is fantastic. like that. He is fantastic. Can you just um, give him a round of applause? Can this is the final panel. Come on. Yeah. Give it up. Come yeah. on. Um, I'm... I know you're probably all exhausted, but I have the most amazing set of panellists with me um, amongst my absolute favourite people within the um, Zero Project family. And we're going to get some fine advice from them and some very interesting information. I, I would put a marker out, though, to um, my fellow organisers that I don't think we should call this a couch session anymore. It's much more a chair session. Yeah. So if you'll excuse me, I will sit down with my chairists. And um, unfortunately and sadly, Michal has to go very quickly after she's done her stuff, so I'm going to give her nine minutes, but I'm going to start off by telling you what we're going to do. So, the main aim of this session is for awardees to reflect on the development of their projects following their success, or indeed, success as, because some have won more than one award at the Zero Project, and then share tips and expertise on how all of you can build on what you've experienced at the conference. For all of you who may not have had the great good fortune to meet or listen to my fabulous panelists before, I have with me, and no particular order except clockwise, I have Michal Ramon, I have Linda Perry, I have Lourdes Marquez, and I have Claudia Vanek. So let's hear it for them. And as I said, Michal has got to go. Um, she's got a big meeting and then she's got to push off back home. So, Michal, you have precisely nine minutes starting from now. And everybody has a little disability. S keeping time is one of mine, so I will do my best. Uh, I'm Michal Rimon. I'm, uh, I always introduce myself as the proud CEO of Access Israel. Um, uh, I'm proud of our activities, of our projects, but most of all of our people. Uh, because uh, I'm standing here, or sitting here in the couch chair uh, session, uh, mostly because of what my amazing team back home does every single day. Um, Access Israel is the leading organization in Israel uh, promoting accessibility, all types of accessibility in all areas of life for all disabilities. Uh, just in our organization we have more than 100 employees, more than half of them are people with disabilities, all types of disabilities, and by the way, they're in our uh, organization because they're amazing. Uh, disability is just an added bonus and uh, to manage such an organization is just... Uh, a great uh, honor and pleasure and teaches me new things every single day. Um, Zero Project uh, uh, awarded us with uh, uh, several projects. Uh, or who is just about to leave, or Cohen, who is just about to leave, was one of the uh, managers in Access Israel that uh, um, uh, promoted one of the projects that won. Uh, in 2016, I think, it was uh, um, uh, chosen for Habitat 3. Uh, it was the Help Me Help You uh, project. It's a training uh, project for, our, uh, for employees, uh, for service providers. And uh, I can tell you in a second what what uh, this uh, award did to uh, this project. Another project was paid forward in sign language, which is an amazing project that basically uh, um, uh, gives people who have no background in accessibility or deaf people um, uh, a glimpse at the deaf community and gives them basic knowledge of uh, sign language. And it has become an amazing trend in Israel. Um, um, this year we had... Uh, um, teacher uh, training uh, because you know you can see put the seeds of inclusive education 
as much as you want, but if the ground will not be fertile enough and won't be watered and won't be ready and prepared to get those seeds, uh, uh, we won't really see any flowers coming out of them. Uh, so this is what this uh, project is all about. I'm pretty sure there was at least one more. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, sure, but matter. the whole idea is... I came here with Netta Rotman, uh, my dear friend uh, who is part of the Zero Project uh, community and unfortunately is not with us anymore. But we came seven years ago. And even if I'll run out of time, I'll say one example. We saw here a panel on uh, emergency uh, times. And there were two panelists there. One was a big Japanese company with a, a solution of an avatar that does sign language yeah. without delay. Another was a Malaysian guy that uh, also deals with earthquakes. Uh, he put the uh, uh, width of the staircase from his house, the width of his armpits. So whenever there is an earthquake, he just slides down, pulls the wheelchair with a rope, and he's free. So there were two projects, both dealing with earthquakes, one million dollar project, and one the price of a rope, which I assume is, even in Malaysia, is not that high. So I saw in Zero Project how you guys give the same opportunity to everyone. 10 minutes on the stage presenting the innovation. That's what made me fall in love. And basically what we did is we took um, uh, uh, the next year and started handing in uh, nominations from Access Israel, yeah. spread the word in Israel, and I think we are one of the countries that gives the most uh, nominations. Most nominations, absolutely. Yeah, we're crazy, yeah. And... <laughs> and um, if, when I try to think of what I'm going to tell you, uh, we gained from it. First of all, um, the fact that this is in the UN building in Israel means a lot. Uh, Israel has a little history with um, not such a good experience always with the, the UN. So the fact that we are called back every single year to a conference at the UN, and not everybody knows what the Essel Foundation is or yeah. Zero Project, um, that was an eye-opener. And all of a sudden, people said, what are you saying? So, you're going to the UN again? And uh, when you get a recognition from uh, uh, a conference at the UN and Zero Project, which now is really known in Israel, um, maybe it's an Israeli thing, but when we were doing it on our own, it was great. But if others appreciate it, maybe we want to learn more about it. So all of a sudden, our uh, project, for example, the Help Me Help You, today is, is uh, I can tell you, thousands and thousands of employees in Israel every year go through these training on providing accessible service. Our legislation, I think, has been affected from uh, some of these projects. Um, uh, thousands of people speak sign language, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that the international angle has yep. really helped us open doors, and uh, I think I'm... Uh, oh, you're well... You're, I, I still have time, yeah, still guys, time. so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say about the weather here in uh, Vienna this time? <laughs> but um, um, the amazing thing is that... Um, um, so, so I spoke about the project, I spoke, I spoke about the Zero Project experience. Uh, I was asked uh, earlier today in uh, panel number six, I think, that I yeah. participated in, um, uh, what gives you the, the innovation, the, the, the power to, to really... Uh, um, and, and I think that the fact that you bring your projects, your local projects, your little babies that you thought of in Israel or in Malaysia or in wherever you guys are coming, and you see the reactions of people from all over the world saying, whoa, that's really good, and you're doing something good. I think that that is, uh, is an eye-opener for me. Every single time I can tell you when I nominate, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it won't be good enough. And, and, and I told Michael one year, uh, when, when one year one of our proje uh, the project that we nominated did not make it, I said that just makes me more excited to come to Zero Project because it means that the other ones are probably amazing, because I know mine is. And, and to really come and learn, and come and share, and come and see the reactions. And I can also tell you that um, um, I think that the projects that we have been awarded at Zero Project have evolved during the years, thanks to the exposure to Zero Project and to the different angles that we see here. Yeah. Um, uh, I can even tell you that the experiences we did in the classroom 
are going to now become a permanent uh, uh, option for the teacher training, which we were awarded for this year. Because we have certain formats, and now we're going to add more formats. There are zero project because of everything that I learned from the audience uh, uh, here. So um, I'll, I'll finish with, with, I have an, a minute and a half. Yeah, I have one question to please, ask. You know, please. at the end. I, I just want to say that if I have to suggest to someone what to do is, first of all, dream. Do, first of all, do, because when you just dream and don't do, then it, it doesn't get to zero project. Yeah. Do, and don't be afraid to nominate. And nominate, keep nominating, because it first of all makes you better when you reevaluate what you're doing. Yes, yeah. sorry. No, absolutely, I, and I should emphasize that. Nominate, nominate, nominate. It's like location, location, location yes. for real estate in New York. Um, Actually, it's two really very, very fast questions, which I'm going to ask all my co-panelists. I'm thinking of perhaps writing two guides, one a short one and one a long one. And one would be a guide to getting the most out of a Zero Project conference. The other one would be getting a guide, getting the most out of being a Zero Project awardee. Okay. What would be the two points that you would put in most important for coming to the conference and getting the most out of it, getting an award and getting most out of it. Okay, you know my friend Caroline Casey? Because I'm very proud to call her my friend. The first time I came to Zero Project, Netta and I, Netta used to be with a scooter. Uh, we planned on where we're gonna catch her to shake her hand. And we were afraid to approach. Everything, everybody looked very, you know, uh, you know, who am I to come and shake the hand of Caroline Casey or, or everybody else here? And the best advice I can give you, you're coming to Zero Project, remember my Malaysian guy and the big Japanese company. We're all equals. We're all here because we're doing the right thing, because we have the right heart in place and we want to make a change. What you have to say is just as important as what anyone on stage has to say. So my best advice, Talk, talk, talk. Communicate, contact, shake hands, don't be afraid. Great. Thank you very much indeed. Can I go? Yeah, you can. No more sessions? Let's hear it for <laughs> Michal. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Really good. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Michal, thanks very much. Safe journey back home. And co-panelists, I'm going to change, not change the format from what I told you, but um, I'm going to start with Linda, then go to Lourdes, and then go to Claudia, just to tell us very, very briefly about who you are, what you do. Thank you. Linda. Um, Sorry. Yeah. 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 Thank you. you said. I'm Linda Perry, and I'm the executive director from Vela Canada. And very simply, what we do is community development work, but on a very personalized basis. We support individuals um, in self-directing their lives, and we do it in a number of different ways. We can do it through individualized budgets, but we also do it primarily through the creation of something called microboards, which are very small nonprofit societies, uh, NGOs, that are created by family and friends with an individual to empower them in decision-making about their lives, and um, where needed, request the funding that would normally go to a large agency so they can customize service. I brought brochures with me so that I, um, I can save you the details and I'll leave them on the tables here for you if you're interested in more details on what it is exactly we do. Great, thank you very much. Lourdes. Okay, thank you so much. Well, I'm Lourdes Marquez, I'm from Once Foundation. We are a foundation from Spain that we have been working for many years to improve the quality of life of people with disabilities, mainly in Spain, but we try to do our best also in Europe, in Latin America. Uh, our main focus areas are education, uh, employment and accessibility, but also uh, innovation, new technologies, uh, culture, and, 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 uh, uh, and so, uh, uh, innovation in order to use this as tools to mainstream as mi our mission to the, to the uh, day, day life, everyday life of people with disabilities. So we are on, the, uh, on this an acronym. 
It's not once, no. it's an acronym that uh, means a, a national organization of people with a blind, for of blind people, or Sp Spanish blind people, sorry. So um, they, they are our funders and they share with us the benefits of the social lottery in Spain, which is our main source of fi uh, financing. And uh, well, uh, Besides ONCE and Foundation ONCE, there, uh, we are part of, a, of the ONCE social group, which is uh, uh, on also get another branch that is a group of companies uh, where we have 50 lines of activities. Uh, one of them, for example, is uh, 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 laundries. We are the champions of the industrial uh, Laund uh, laundry sector in Spain. So what we want is to demonstrate that we are not talking about inclusion, that uh, we want to demonstrate that it is possible. We are 70, in total, 70,000 people, more uh, than 56% people with disabilities, 48% uh, women, uh, and we have a lot of friends and organizations that are working with us in order to, to go further. That is Great, thank you very much indeed. Claudia, over to you. Uh, first, I will speak Thanks. out of the microphone because blind people, to help blind people to know where I am. Hello, I'm very proud to be here. <laughs> very proud. Uh, that's the first time I will speak here without reading. I will try not to read because you provoked me to do this. Uh, well, my name is Claudia. I'm a journalist and writer and political activists for inclusion. As a journalist, I believe that the most serious uh, discriminations, acts of discriminations, happen during the process of communication. So I dedicated the last 30, 30 years of my life to denounce it and more, to find solutions to it. I think the, this discrimination happens because for the lack of accessibility, all kinds of accessibility, but mainly communication accessibility, communicational accessibility. Even here in the, the Zero Project, I realize sometimes even the best practice do not bring products and service with all kinds of communication accessibility. It is, it is something that uh, I don't want to be uh, rude, but it's something that touches me negatively. I, do, I don't know if I'm, I'm having, being clear. Yeah, yes, educate, I'm, yeah. educate, yeah. educate. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, to, in two, 18 years ago, I founded the NGO College School of People. School of People means, in Portuguese, we are unconditional followers of people. We do not admit any kind of a discrimination for, doesn't matter which, which subject to use, which reason. Here, in Zero Project, we were awarded three times in different years, different categories. And last year, we were selected as for impact transfer as well. We, how do you work? We work to transform public policies in, into everyday inclusive practices. We want inclusion every day. Everything we do has to be mixed of persons with and without disability as a, as a guideline for us. And to finish, I cannot resist to read. Ah, this year, Zero Project, the Zero Project is t told us we are the only Latin America NGO with so many Zero Project awards. Well so, done. Brazil. <laughs> thank well you. Done. <laughs> oh, great. Claudia, that's great. That's only round one. So, round two. Um, my panelists are going to. Claudia's just touched on it, but I'm going to go over to Linda now, who's going to tell her, tell us a wee bit, a little bit, about the award that she got. And then what we're going to do is we're going to learn about 
the awards that my panelists got, and then they're going to get into the meat of things to tell you how you should use your awards, how you should use your experience at the conference, um, how you should go out and further your aims, further, further your cause, and further our cause, since it's one single cause. Linda. Thank you. Ooh, there we go. Thank you. Um, we won our award in 2015 for um, um, practice in independent living, and that was around the work we do with microboards. So the award was, um, for us, astounding. It was very nice to get the recognition, but also um, we hold the Zero Project in quite high esteem. So to be, uh, be awarded with the people um, that come to this conference was very humbling for us. And our project, quite simply, is just putting together these networks around individuals that empower the person to direct their own life. And those networks of close family and friends are there to support them to ensure that that is heard and that they are, in fact, the captains of their own ships. Great. Thank you very much. Lourdes. OK. <laughs> Well, uh, we have received uh, nine awards from, <laughs> we, are, we are a very big uh, one, uh, so, and <laughs> many people working. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think I'm going to choose. Uh, uh, well, we have received four regarding employment, mm -hmm. uh, two regarding education, two on accessibility, and one on independent living. Yeah, so, so we are every, day, yeah. every year here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always a pleasure. Uh, for example, um, this, uh, uh, the first one we, we, we got was uh, uh, inclusive, and, and, uh, inclusive finance for uh, uh, education for people in, with intellectual disabilities. This is a, a very nice one because it was awarded when it was a pilot. Yeah. And so we could validate with the award that we are, were going in, in, in the good way. In the right direction. <laughs> in the good direction. And this year, my colleagues has been uh, here at the exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they are now in four countries, uh, in Spain, Portugal, Ukraine, and Greece. And they have, uh, at this moment, a, a lot of uh, potential partners uh, that could be, uh, that could be uh, in, the, in the program too. So yeah. it, this is fantastic, of course. Uh, uh, for example, we have another one that it was um, an a BQL certification, that it was a certification for the companies. Yeah. Uh, it is a, not only a level, also a methodology that it is uh, um, about uh, 60, 69 indicators uh, that uh, helps the companies to, um, to, to evaluate where they are, uh, if they have gaps or if they have been uh, progressing in order to elaborate a roadmap Mm. Uh, to improve in their commitment with, uh, with inclusion. Great. Okay, so uh, the, the partners have, have also increased, and it, is, uh, it was fantastic to be here also for, for, for the team. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, I have, I have to got, choose. Can you choose one more? One more, okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um, mm, uh, okay, for example, the, the, one, uh, uh, the one that has, has been awarded this year, that is, is a platform uh, of MOOCs, of MOOCs yes. open uh, massive uh, online courses yep. that are focused on accessibility and also rights of people with disabilities. This is a, a, an agreement with the Distance University of Spain and also the Royal Board of the uh, of Disabilities uh, uh, of our country, and it is having a great impact on the students in order to complement their their career. Great. Also, yeah. Thank you very much, and thanks very much for you know choosing your best yeah, ones. Yeah. Well, I was keeping some information, but I now I have to tell because she has nine awards. So I, I have to say that our NGO <laughs> has been impacted directly 
for uh, 5,000, no, 500,000 people in 18 years of existence, and that have, we have already worked in 19 countries. Only to some equiparation of status with here. Right. <laughs> and we have awarded, uh, including zero project, yeah. awarded more, more than 60. I'm sorry, I, have, I had to say, no, I have no, to say. Go on, go on. But now, <laughs> we were awarded here for the first time in 2014 yeah. with the project Accessible Theatre, Art, Pleasure and Rights. Uh, this project started in 2003. It was created by my daughter when she was studying drama in a public university. Now she's very famous actress in Brazil, is very famous. And she, in 2003, she decided to, to create a project in our NGO to, to, uh, to talk about inclusion through the theater and with total physical and accessibility, physical and communication accessibility since 2000. Three. I mean, maybe it is the, 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 the first group of theater, or maybe the only one that offers more than 10 accessible communication accessibilities, even if there is no one person with a disability in the audience. For us, it doesn't matter who is in the audience. And now, the second one, it was our project of accessible lecture because we, we find that the childhood uh, must grow up, grow up, grow yep. up, grow up, understand that the book, as we know today, a printed book, is an instrument of power. And it is very aggressive for people who, as in Brazil, are many people, literate people, people that cannot read, that couldn't learn to read, for social reasons of any kind of situation, people could have not hunger, uh, uh, have the booking. So we, this project is to, to show childhood how there is infinite, infinite forms of achieving information. And the book is only one more. It was the second one. The third one, it was last year, for independence life participation, political participation. We, our project was selected by the Impact Transfer as well. It was accessibility promotion agents. And the project has the objective to, to train young leaders with and without disability in the slums, favelas, in Rio de Janeiro, a very poor situation. And we, we, we teach them to, uh, after a 45-hour course, how to intervene, 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 yeah. intervene, always when the right of communication of a, peop, of a person with a disability, any disability, is being violated. So it's this, the third one, and for, it's okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Quality. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm sorry that you had to pare down the ones you told us, but they were absolutely great. So now we, now we have the stage set. We're going to get into the, the meat of things. And um, Linda's going to talk first. Lourdes is going to um, speak after that. And she's going to show a wee film. And then Claudia is going to speak after that, and she's also got a little film that she can show us. So, Linda, over to you. What did you do with your success to take your project forward? What would you a bit advise? It's going to be solicited advice. Would you okay. give to conference goers and awardees? I've been waiting for this one. Yes, I know, and I'm going to give you five minutes. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> no, that's right, but okay, five well, minutes for everybody. I think for us, the, um, the impact was, was something we had anticipated how significant it was going to be when we got home. Um, first of all, it's one of those things where they say, there's a, the saying, you're never a prophet in your own homeland. And I think that when we received the award, suddenly people that we'd known for many years that had been watching our work took us seriously. Like they realized, oh, other people are paying attention. So maybe we need to look a little bit more into it. And it was surprising to us how many people we'd had contact with 
in government and other places that we had assumptions that they understood what we did, but they really didn't until they found out other people in other parts of the world knew more about what we were doing now. Right. So that had a profound impact on our work. Um, we also found that in our country, so I'm from the province of British Columbia, and um, we're on the west coast and largely forgotten by the east um, because of a, a range of mountains and we're all considered kind of eccentric and odd, so um, a lot of people don't trust us. But um, what happened was a lot of people on the other side of the mountains started taking notice as well. So since that time, we've uh, set up some microboards in Ontario, which is um, sort of seen as the center of the universe for Canada. Um, and we've worked with some families there and it's been quite amazing to watch how they've just taken off with the information. We've also worked in our neighboring province, which is Alberta, and we've done a lot of work with families there and we're really starting to get some momentum. We also, while we were here, and I think this is one that is important to stress for everybody, is met other like-minded people, which for me was, is by far the biggest benefit, is all the people we meet where we go, wow, we have a lot in common, and sharing ideas. So we, at the very first conference in 2015, met the folks from Yuloba, who are in Norway, and we've since been working with them, um, setting up some microboards within their organization for people with developmental disabilities. So we're working in partnership. Um, we've also undergone and just about finished a research project into our work. Suddenly people were going, well, maybe we need to study this a little bit and understand what's going on. And the final um, findings from that will be out within the next month or two. And what they're finding, the preliminary findings have found is that people that have created microboards um, have a significantly higher report of quality of life and um, self-management um, self of their supports and feeling more in control and far more inclusive lives. So our goals were, were met. And the stories that we have as a result of that have been profound, like hearing from people. And it's given, um, it, it's, I think it's given us a lot of learning. And what we found is that, for instance, the work we've done with um, the folks at Uloba has taught us a lot too. So it's not just about us going and teaching other people, but we've had the opportunity to meet other people from other places and learn a lot. Um, and th I think from my perspective, it's also that so much of this is there's the sessions which are incredibly inspiring. I mean, they've been amazing. Um, <clears throat> and I think as was mentioned earlier, it's not just the, the big projects, but some of the ones that are, are from developing countries that are very humble, that do amazing things. And we've taken a lot of those lessons back and said, you know, we could do this. This is just very simple and straight ahead. Why haven't we thought about it? Not everything needs a lot of money thrown at it to, to work. And um, that's been very inspiring for us. And also the people here, I think that, um, I know she's mentioned earlier, but Carolyn Casey last year introduced me to a mom in Ireland. And that was a great exchange of information when I went, I had the um, pleasure of going over to Ireland for a visit with a friend and met with the mom and we had a great exchange. And I know through that we both learned something. So I think you can't underestimate the connections you're gonna make um, I think the, um, the impact transfer, I mean, we met some people today that I think it's, it was a great match and just our like-mindedness, that's the stuff for me that keeps me going. Like, it's the stuff where I go, yes, there's other people that think the way I do and, and the ideas are being sparked and it's an incredibly powerful experience. So from my perspective, as somebody attending this conference, I can't emphasize the value of that. The time you spend with other people, like-minded people from very different places that um, will impact you is profound. And I keep coming back because of that. And I honestly say to people um, at home that of all the conferences I've had the privilege to attend, this is the one for me. It's the one where I'm inspired and I get great learning and a great exchange of information. Right. Linda, thank you very much indeed. I feel very humbled. That's just great. So connections, 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 talk, talk, talk with anybody and everybody. Lourdes, I don't know, do you want to show your, when do you want to show your film? In, yeah. Shall, can we, do you want to introduce it? Okay, then, well, yeah. we wanted to share. And we've got five minutes yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, we wanted to share with you a campaign that we elaborated. It was during the last crisis in Spain. It was uh, focused to the young people in order to, to push them and, and 
uh, to and promote the employment. Uh, it, it is an advice that it, uh, we think that is uh, very good uh, for everyone as persons, but also uh, as organizations. It doesn't matter if we are bigger or smaller, we are doing the same and trying to do a better world. And for that uh, is this, is this uh, video. Great. Um, okay. Could we please have um, Lourdes Marquez video? There's a storm coming. But it's only one of many more to come. It's not a good moment to hang up your gloves. It's time to shake off any excuses and pull yourself together. If life changes your script, change the punctuation. If there's something you don't like, change it. Fight. Failure is not trying. Life is a constant challenge. This also makes it exciting. Take a good look at yourself. is not about torn jeans. It's not about piercing your tongue. Being a rebel is waking up every morning and insisting on following your dreams. If you really want it, one day you'll go outside. And that dream, and that dream will be out there waiting for you. Never give up. Employment program for young people with disabilities. Visit noterindasnunca.org. Thank you very much. Now, um, so, Lourdes, your advice to people oh, are, my as advice. an awardee <laughs> and as an awardee. to get the best out of the conference. Okay. Uh, well, the, that one was the best advice uh, from <laughs> us. But, but what we wanted to say is that it, not, not, it is not always the best day. And we are not going to feel as motivated as we are when we come back from the Zero Project. Uh, but we have a great mission together. And, we, uh, and the feeling is that it, it doesn't matter if you are not awarded. Uh, what it matters is that, that you are doing things to change. Uh, and to get a more inclusive world for, for all of us. So uh, that is our message. That is how we feel when we come to the Zero Project. And so uh, we feel very thankful for, for all the persons and the projects that are here and share with us all what they have done. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Claudia, over to you. Well, I talk about our accessible theatre, but as I told you, we exist, exist from 2030, and in 2011 became a national campaign, and it became a public policy in 2013, but it was only in 2014 when it was awarded here in the Zero Project that we really receive, received and gained, not, gained notoriety and credibility. So as soon we arrived from the Zero Project conference, the presidency of Brazil gave us the most noble award recognition in the cultural area, the Order of National Merit. So, it was, I know it was because <laughs> you recognized us. And after many things happened, we wrote, written, we have written a law, and this law was approved by the Congress about today in Brazil and, and sanctioned by the presidents of Brazil. Now we have in Brazil a special day for national, for accessible theater. But we had a joke, and we didn't, we didn't tell to the presidents and we didn't tell to the Congress that the day we were pro proposing was the same day of the theater, the common theater. <laughs> so they are the same day, accessible normal theater. They discovered it many, many times after, later on. Yeah. But now I am going to tell you the second, uh, um, how can I say, consequence yeah. of this, that we start last year, no, yes, 2000, 
Manhattan, because of the success of our theater, we develop an accessible platform, a mobile app, where people who are producing accessible culture in Brazil can register what they are doing, and people with, accessibility, people with disabilities can know what is happening in, any, in each part of Brazil. And an um, important thing for us is that we consider gratuity and accessibility. Because we know in a country in, as Brazil, where 8% of people with disabilities live in poverty, gratuity is accessibility. So our mobile, mobile, mobile app, app, yeah. mobile app, app uh, it has the gratuity as one of the accessibilities. So people, when looking for a place to go free of charge, can find yeah. in our app. I, it became a very big campaign in TV Globe last December. That is the most, uh, it was broadcasted in yeah. TV, the most biggest, the most big, uh, big com biggest. biggest company yeah. of communication uh, uh, out in the US. And this film is very small, 30 seconds, yeah, I would like absolutely. to show. And it is with accessibility in English and international sign language as well. Wonderful. Can we have Claudia Vanex video? Thank you. Please. Whoops. Accessibility has met culture. Download Vinca, the first accessible entertainment app in Brazil. The app Vinca on the screen of a rotating cell phone. Blind person with headphones smiles and claps his hands. Birded man laughing. Young lady with Down syndrome smiles. Black guy smiles and applauds using sign language. Escola de gente. Download Vinca. Without accessibility, art does not make sense. Great, thank you. Yes, we have it to uh, 25, 25,000 downloads yeah. immediately, and all the country is using it. Right. And, sorry. Ad advice? Yeah. I would like to give you an advice. Okay. Is it possible? Yes, please. Absolutely. No, I was going to ask uh, you to do exactly that. <laughs> since I came here for the first time, I, I never stopped exercising myself to, to come back. Oh, thank you so <laughs> because much. Because it's so important. As we are an uh, NGO without any kind of financial susten sustainability, is it? Yeah. We have to, to be sure in, in which option we will put, invest our time and our resources. And why? We, choose, we had chosen to come here because we consider the Zero Project Conference is the most important event of inclusion and accessibility of the world. So we, choose, we had chosen to be here. But um, I think for me it's important to come here because I, I found my peers yeah. and these peers are in, uh, spread all over the world and they come here, <laughs> so I have peers. I'm not, uh, my my long, loneliness is, is become better. Yeah. And for us coming to the zero project as well is like zero project for us is a verb to come here is a verb we never conjugate in the past, always in the present and the future. Yeah. And because. Uh, when, when we are arrive in Brazil now, we, are, we always do a very report for all the companies that help us to come here. And it's a kind, as a kind of uh, an accountability for society, for the companies, for the people that follow us. And um, the most important thing for me is it is opportunity to, to make a, a kind of accountability of myself, have I been able to accomplish my guidelines and have my peers, have, are my peers being uh, able to do the same? Yeah. So there are many things um, and I always, I always thinking uh, how can I uh, be better? How can become bigger my impact when I come here? Great. I have more things to say, but I will stop because I know yeah. you have time. I, and I'm just going to, I, we've got three more minutes, and I'm going to ask 
I think, an appropriate question. What would you tell everybody here not to forget when they walk out of this room? And you have one minute starting from now. Goodness, that's an excellent question. Um, <clears throat> I think what I tell everybody not to forget is the connections that you're making and the inspiration that you're gaining from being here. I am... Um, that sustains me through the year, that, that stuff you're talking about, the day-to-day, -day, you're not always feeling great about everything that's going on. I often will think back to moments, conversations I've had, things I heard here um, that keep me going on my day-to-day -day work. So remember those moments because they are really magical and there's, there's something very special about this place. Great. Thank you very much indeed. Lourdes. Okay. Well, I, I could say that we cannot forget that we are talking about human rights. Um, this is uh, essential for a, for a person, and it's, it is not only good for people with disabilities, it is good for the society in general. So we have not to forget that in our actions and in, in our attitudes and in our messages too. Great, thank you. I tell people to tell you have been here. Tell to everybody you find you have been here because in zero in the zero project we are always in the inclusive hyper connection. Great. <laughs> so please tell people you are here, you have been here, you will you be here again, and please tell them to come to to register to to not have uh, fear. It's necessary to to stay together, but. Finally, I would like to say that these years, the Zero Project gave me the most, the more important opportunity, I think, that is to, to work for the integration of my America, my Latin America, because I will be a kind of a partner in mobilization, uh, helping uh, this group, this Fundación Descubre Me, yeah. to, to take people, many people, to, um, uh, to Chile. Great, yes, to Santiago. Santiago de Chile. And for me it's important because we in Brazil has, we don't have the habit to consider we are Latin America. Yeah. And so it is, is my purpose. And I think the, the Zero Project Conference in Chile, in Santiago, you help me to do another work I like very much that's help people in Brazil to integrate, to, to know more about the other countries of Latin America and the other countries to know more about Brazil. Great, thank you very much. Co-panelists, well, actually, I wasn't a member of the panel. Um, panelists, thank you very much indeed. And um, can I ask you all, please, to thank my absolutely incredible panelists here um, for the advice they've given us, the enthusiasm, the successes they've had, and that uh, we wish them every success in the present and in the future. Thank you so much.